try to do a video, my thoughts on the market, you know, and, and just some thumbnail, like, because the market's been weird, right? The market has been very weird, but what's even weirder is that I got to meet, meet Kevin, and he gave me some YouTube tips, said I should be on camera more often. So, hey, how's it going? I'm on camera now, and Coco is too. She wanted to say hi. After sharing that photo online, one of the first tweets that I received was this. I hope you don't end up making shocked YouTube faces now that you've been exposed to Kevin. So, of course, I had to do that in my thumbnail. The stock market has been throwing out lots of warning signs for some time now. If you watch my daily stock market brief, you've been hearing me hammer down on all of these divergences. Let's get into some charts. So I want to walk you through the possibility that we might be seeing a 10 to 15% correction, which would not be anything out of the blue. The market has been setting up for something like this to take place. The first thing that we're looking at is the yields right now. You can see the blue line is the 10 year yield. The black line here is the 30 year yield and below us are the spreads, the tens and twos. And we are also looking at the 30 minus five. I just want to call out here that the bond market, we're looking at the yields have been really falling down since April to May and they've been just slightly falling lower and lower the yields have which tell me that as bonds move higher in price they're they possibly are positioning for something to take place now the equity market it's been on a crazy ramp but what can the bond market be signaling to us right now perhaps it has something to do with the debt ceiling deadline CNBC reported the US debt ceiling deadline is at the end of July the upcoming vote by Congress to either raise or suspend the debt ceiling is becoming the latest political minefield for Democratic leaders. Also in recent news is the Delta variant, and that is taking hold in the United States as corona cases rise nearly 70%. Now, what I find interesting here about this news that has been coming out is what the market has been doing ahead of any massive event. So, like I said, the bond, the yields have been heading lower, potentially pricing a risk-off environment. And with the Delta variant, you can notice that the travel and tourism index has been heading significantly lower as well. It's down roughly 20% from its high. And by looking at this specific chart, this pattern is known as a head and shoulders, which is a market topping pattern. It recently just cracked through the neckline and a full measured move, if we measure from the, the top of the head to the neckline, would bring us to around 575 to 625 for a move to the downside. Side. However, it's interesting to me that perhaps the market is already pricing in this news. So this could present some very strong opportunities in the future. If you look at the dollar, it's also creating a head and shoulders pattern. This is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And as of recent months, you can see a big spike here in the dollar, still with overall sideways price action. But if we crack through this neckline and it heads higher, that would signal to me that there's more risk off events to take place. Some of the charts that I've been posting on my daily stock market brief, uh, uh, the divergences are something like this. We look at bonds, sorry, look at the S&P 500 over the TLT. We look at that ratio. And as that puts in lower highs, the S&P 500 has been putting in higher highs. And that right there is a clear divergence. And when these divergences play out, you can see the S&P 500 head lower. If you take a look at what asset managers are doing, we're reading right now at 93.27. This is a very, very bullish reading. And from a contrarian standpoint, this tells me that there's a lot of risk on the other side. So for example, if we look at the 2020, right before the pandemic and the market crash, you can see we had a very similar reading. This tells me that they're exposed to downside risk. On the red right here, this is known as the Rydex. Very, very bullish reading here. It's at 0 0.079. It hasn't been this bullish I mean, for you just look back to the left of the chart. This is an extremely bullish reading, which tells me that they are exposed to if something were to take place, this would have to revert the downside 
uh, fast, which tells me as the market presses higher, a move to the downside can be quite dramatic. If we look at the CPC, this is the put to call ratio. It crossed through the red line, the 10 period moving average. That is a sell signal. When it does that, you can see movements down in the market. We just recently crossed through. If you follow my show, you know that and our market has been heading lower. More deterioration has been taking place from an internal ex um, breadth uh, perspective right here. S&P 500% of stocks above the 50 day moving average continue to decline. All right, so the market still, it's a percent you know, to 2% away from its all-time high, but the internals of the market have been declining since mid-April. That is not a good sign. And then you look at the XVG, the value line geometric index, it's been putting in lower highs and lower lows. The trend is down, it closed well below the 50-day moving average. That is diverging from the S&P 500. Equal weight S&P 500 never broke out to all-time highs. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 did. So few stocks are holding this market together, which is a dangerous thing transports consider con continue sorry to decline lower highs and lower lows s p 500 moves higher this is not a good sign these are all warning signs that we've been talking about housing index also lower highs and lower lows diverging from the overall broad market the s p 500 typically they move in unison so this is something that you want to really focus in on if you look at the NYSE advanced decline it never put in an all-time high why the overall broad market did and that is a clear divergence taking place it got below the 50 reading on the RSI below the lower Bollinger Band below the 50-day moving average too so this could very well be the start of a bigger move or potential overextended reading so we'll have to wait and see if you know Michael Guyad's award-winning research papers, the beta rotation strategy and lumber worth its weight in gold, you would be familiar with these indicators. This indicator just now recently flipped to risk off. This is when utilities, a defensive sector, outperforms the S&P 500. We just now crossed through the zero line as you see it right here. And then lumber to gold ratio has been on a risk off environment since early to mid June. This is when gold outperforms lumber this rate of change you will typically see it fall below zero lumber has had a rampant run up but as of recently that has been just completely getting obliterated if we take a look at some of the indices the small caps this is why it's probably been very difficult for many retail traders to navigate this market Small caps have not gone anywhere for five to six months. And yes, many people are watching this area of support right here to see if it potentially breaks down. But let's look at it from a longer term perspective. Looking at it on the monthly time frame, it's been in a nice bullish channel from 2000. And you can see here, higher highs, higher lows. So the overall long-term context is very bullish, but you'll notice every once in a while, it breaks out of the channel. It hasn't from the upside, but from the downside, these are known as exhaustion breaks. And as you can see here, if you watch my, been watching my show for a, a few months back, I talked about the break above here that could be a potential exhaustion break. And we're seeing right now, month to date, the small caps are down 6.29%. This is some extreme weakness. If you look at the PMO right here. This indicator is starting to curl over at an overextended reading. The last time it did that was here in 2014. Very interesting. But what happened to the index when it crossed over? It actually just went into a period of consolidation and a lot of sideways chop for two years. Okay. So it's a very overextended reading. Perhaps we are seeing or entering a time period where we're not going to be getting much price movement on small caps. But where can it potentially fall to? Well, let's look at the quarterly chart. And you can see here we have the five EMA. That's a quarterly moving average, exponential moving average. And you can see all the quarters really, they reconnect with this moving average. It's one of the most frequently connected with moving averages and what we're seeing here the last three quarters it has been not only completely overextended from it but it's been above the upper Bollinger Band as well and we call this out and now we're starting to see weakness so a reconnect would bring us to around 202 on the IWM let's look at the S&P 500 people are calling for a broadening wedge megaphone pattern here this is on the daily time frame this to me would represent a 10 percent pullback in the S&P 500 now that looks absolutely crazy however 
it's not that crazy and I'll show you on the other chart. So first off, if we start moving down, like right now we're about down to, you know, percent to 2% from the peak. So overall context of this chart is still very, very bullish, but there are things underneath the surface that are calling for, hey, we could have a black swan event that could lead to a 10 to 15% decline. And then we could go ahead and continue this ramp up higher. Like I said, overall context is very bullish, but a 10% pull down, where would that take us? Well, that would take us to the quarterly EMA on the S&P 500, which is at 3,964. So let's call it a 4,000 or 3,900. Yeah, I'll just say 4,000 reconnect. That to me, a lot of people would probably be very, you know, freaked out in that environment, but that could potentially offer up an opportunity to go long and play some significant uh, bounce bounces. If you look at the weekly time frame, you also have a broadening wedge pattern that we broke out of. But what's interesting about here is the volatility patterns and the construct of these technical patterns have been well, well respected. You had a falling wedge here, boom, a rising wedge, and it broke down while it broke out. You had a rising wedge, a falling wedge, it broke out and it broke down. What we're seeing here is a very well respected technical pattern too in the VXX falling wedge and a rising wedge here. So a breakdown of this would be what? This would take us back to this trend line right at around 4,000 as already stated from the daily time frame. So in a drop like this, the market would get very scared. That's a given. But if you're paying attention to the bigger picture, this right here can offer up some excellent opportunities. And that's not something that you want to miss. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100, the price percent oscillator, recently had a bearish crossover and an overextended reading. Right now, the NASDAQ 100 is only down 2.3% from its peak. An 11% drawdown would bring us to around the 200-day moving average, and that's also also a quarterly 5 EMA reconnect. The last time we had these rollovers right here in the PMO at overextended readings, we had a 8% uh, pullback and then the one previous to that was a 12% correction. So that to me makes complete sense. However, overall context of this is very bullish and this is one you'd want to pay close attention to because the NASDAQ, the big tech, the mega stocks, this would be good opportunities to find individual stocks to buy into on various pullbacks. And if you look at the quarterly chart here, the quarterly brings us to 13,002 two, three, so let's just call it 13,200. If we reconnect that, that would offer up an excellent opportunity to go long in tech. And you can see here, there hasn't been a quarterly 5 EMA reconnect now for one, two, three, four, and we're on our fifth quarter as the RSI obviously too is very frothy and overbought and we're trading outside the upper Bollinger Band. It's only a matter of time before we get reconnects. It will happen eventually, so you need to be prepared for if it does. Now, most of that sounded very bearish, but this isn't going to be a straight move to the downside. Let me explain. This right here is the NIMO, the Nizi McClellan oscillator, and you can see here it's at a minus 60, a little bit more than that, minus 62 reading. That is actually an overextended reading, so it's likely to see bounces in this environment, and this to me is a bullish sign. Why is it bullish? Well, the market is only down about a couple percent from its peak and we're getting small moves to the downside, but we're getting overextended technical readings very, very quickly. Now this could turn into something like we saw during the pandemic, so that's always a possibility, but just note that these type of pullbacks do present good bounce opportunities. If you look at the BPSPX chart, positive divergence building here in the RSI, you can see lower, lower lows, and you see higher lows here in the RSI, also which represents bounce opportunities. It's not oversold, so that means we could potentially get a gap down going into next week. However, if we get a gap down going into next week, it's likely to see dip buyers come in right away, but we need to be just cautious in that environment. If you look at semiconductors, this is a 15 minute time frame, so this is much shorter term. This is very overextended to the downside. This would represent bounce opportunities. So if we get a gap down come Monday morning, I wouldn't be shocked or surprised to see that get bid right back up. But like I said, could be a dead cat bounce, might not. If we get a gap up, I'd be a little worried because if we get a gap up, 
that means the overextended readings will probably get reset and that offers up the opportunity for people to sell into that rip and then potentially wait for the next dip to buy a couple more charts here transports you can see also overextended to the downside below its five-day moving average it's been declining but being that it's overextended if we get a gap down come monday morning it'd be likely to see that get bought up same with the SPY, overextended to the downside as well, still within this technical pattern, offers up an opportunity to bounce. If we get a gap down, that would present a bouncing opportunity. It did fill this previous gap, so we'll see what happens there. And then the industrials too as well on the 15 minute time frame is getting pretty frothy to the downside. So that suggests, like I said, either the start of a more of a breakdown or a potential opportunity to play the bounce. All right, everybody, that's all we have on today's episode. Just to wrap things up, if we do get a 10 to 15% correction, which does seem likely in this environment, as many risk signals have been flipping to risk off, if we come to a 10 to 15% correction and we connect with these quarterly 5 EMAs, from a technical perspective, that can offer up a huge opportunity. So you need to be prepared for if something like that happens, because most of the market will be at peak fear. And at that peak fear on a 15% decline, you need to be ready to buy. That's all I got for you. See you later.